In this episode, I had the good fortune of speaking with Dr. Rebecca Gibbons of Achieve Acupuncture and Integrative Medicine. If you're new to the podcast, please know that you can find all of Dr. Gibbons' contact information if you need the services of Achieve Acupuncture and Integrative Medicine in the show notes, both on the audio and video versions of this episode. sharing your time with us as we chat with entrepreneurs and small business owners here in St. Petersburg, Florida. We talk about how they got started, how they built their business, and how they serve our community. I'm Brett Bittner and I'm the host of Hustleberg. And I started Beyond Your Side Hustle because I found that most entrepreneurs lack the time and expertise to build themselves a digital marketing strategy that gets results. At Beyond Your Side Hustle, we help you craft an awesome strategy to stand out from the competition and build a community that supports your business today and in the future. We help budding entrepreneurs go beyond their side hustle into the business they're dreaming of. As the founder of a small business here in St. Pete myself, I love meeting and talking with fellow business owners about what they do. Now, you may have noticed a few changes with the podcast lately, and one of the biggest is that we're now doing video. So if you're only listening to this episode, whether it's on your favorite podcast player, RadioStPete.com, or Sunshine 96.7 FM, please know that this episode and all future episodes are available on YouTube for your viewing pleasure. Visit BeyondYourSideHustle.com slash YouTube to subscribe or to watch Hustleberg. And if you find anything of value in this episode, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast. If you would, also please rate and review the episode as well. It sends us the right signals about knowing how the conversations added value for you. If you are interested in being a guest in an upcoming episode and you own a business here in St. Pete or somewhere else nearby on this side of the bay, please let us know by visiting beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast guest. So Dr. Gibbons, why acupuncture? So I have been an RN for 15 years, and during those 15 years, I had taken care of a lot of people that had chronic conditions and chronic pain, especially. And a lot of those patients were um, hopeless because they were on a lot of different medications that were uncomfortable. Um, They went through surgeries that they might have had complications with. And then you saw that their days were like filled with medication uh, refills, doctor's visits, injections, hospital stays, rehabs and everything. So as an RN, that was something that was really difficult for me to watch Um, because it not only took a toll on the patient, but it took a toll on the family members as well. Um, So halfway through my nursing career, I decided to go back to school as an acupuncturist. And I I decided that because that was, it was something that had helped me. I had had um, chronic migraines for years and uh, back pain. So it had something that helped me in my twenties. And so now as an acupuncture physician, I am able to integrate my Western medicine background with Eastern medicine strategies and and offer more um, non-invasive, uh, solutions to people with chronic pain and, um, and, and chronic injuries or, or just difficult to treat uh, chronic cases. So. so who are the people who are going to be benefiting the most from visiting you in this holistic or integrative medicine environment? So we specialize in um, chronic conditions and difficult to treat. So okay. people that are chronic pain, um, people that have maybe tried everything else, but they have had little success. Um, we have patients that are, you know, for neuropathy, my chronic migraines, uh, infertility for both men and women and high risk pregnancies. So a lot of these patients have tried everything else and they come into us and I tell them we are kind of the last resort. A lot of times (laughs) we were like, oh, I've tried everything else. I'm going to come to you. 
Um, but I tell them we're the last resort with the best results, you know, so okay. we, we give them a lot of hope. Now, we're not talking about ending up like the lead character in Hellraiser with things all over your face or your body. So give I've never been visited an acupuncturist. So kind of give me and the Hustleberg community a look or uh, some descriptions of what that looks like for your typical patient. Right. So well, what we do, we might be a little bit different um, than other practitioners here. I don't know exactly how everybody um, practices, but what we do, we bring um, our patients in and we do a consultation with myself. Um, and that's about 15, 20 minutes. We talk about their case and we, we wanna make sure that you're a good candidate for acupuncture and other therapies that we offer here. Um, Cause not every, I, we can't help everybody, you know, and not everybody is a good candidate or a good fit. And so after that, I go over, if they are a good candidate, we uh, talk about their treatment plan and, and then we start right away um, if they're willing. And it's um, lay you in the room and it's a lot of people fall asleep, honestly, during it. Okay. And I know a lot of people are, are scared of it, but you know, if they're really wanting um, to get better, they, they move past that. You know, we move okay. past that nervousness. And then, you know, out, usually after the first treatment, they're like, oh, this isn't bad at all. So, I mean, the needles are so thin and they're, they're, they're hardly anything. So, yeah. So how was it that you started this? This, uh, it doesn't seem like this is something that you can just jump right into. Most things in the healthcare field require many years of training, uh, education, certification. So kind of give us that path for you. You shared that you were an RN for a significant amount of time uh, before you began. So what's that transition like, I guess, from the RN perspective to being an acupuncturist? Right, right. So schooling is four years. And then of course right. we also have four uh, medical boards that we have to pass before we can become um, licensed here in Florida. Um, and then at that time, I was work, I was doing both for a couple of years, you know, both nursing and um, and and developing my business. So so yeah, it's it's a long process to become an acupuncture physician, but it's it's so well worth it. The results are just amazing. So yeah, and then of course there's the whole beast of developing the business and and talking to the community and getting the word out. Sure. Well, we talked a little bit earlier before we got started recording and uh, the Hustleberg communities heard it from a lot of the professional services providers. You know, you take a look at Dr. Jenna Elwert, who's a psychotherapist. You take a look at Dr. Narav Mehta, who is a, a pharmacist. They have kind of heard this question before, but a lot of the professional services providers don't get a tremendous amount of business education. So what are what was that path like for you to create a business where you didn't have that educational background? Right, right. So yeah, in FQ, uh, when I went back to school, we had one class and it was maybe an hour, <laughs> an oh hour once a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was a slap in the face because I thought I'm going to, you know, open my business and people are just going to come in, you know, they're, right. everybody's there about me, you know. So um, there was a lot, uh, a large learning curve for, for, for the uh, health professionals, I, I think. Um, but I've, I've always believed that you do need to surround yourself with people that are going to challenge you, that have been down that path before, um, you know, and that are going to critique you and be honest with you. So, um, yeah, so I learned a lot. <laughs> and then sure. finally, about a year into practice, I felt like I was banging my head against the wall. Okay. And so I, I found um, some mentors and I have three great mentors right now that have had between the three of them, 60 years of experience in oh, wow. acupuncture and um, business. So they've, they've created great practices, acupuncture practices um, are very successful. So. I'm always in contact with them weekly. You know, what can I do better? How can I be better? Um, because I want to grow as a business and a practitioner, you know, so I can help the community stay healthy. Because I mean, look at St. Petersburg. It's beautiful. It's great. It's right. thriving. Nobody should feel, you know, like they can't get out and enjoy it. 
So aside from those mentors, do you have any other resources available at your disposal that are helping you in building Achieve Acupuncture and Integrative Medicine? Um, so of course, I, I ended up hiring a great assistant who has okay. built um, practices before. Um, I made sure that I found somebody that could, because um, I know my weaknesses, you know, and my, my strength is not exactly business. It's getting a lot better. Um, and she's been there before. So I, I made sure to hire somebody um, that knows that that path. And then um, I do listen to um, like Seth Godin. Um, yeah. I will listen to um, Gary Vee and Grant Cardone. I can only take little bits and pieces, but when I need to get motivated and get my button, right. they're, they're great. Um, and then I think it was uh, Timothy Ferris. I just finished his book, The 4-Hour Review, too. Yeah. Oh, sure. So, what is the most important lesson that you've learned thus far with your business? And to give some context for people who are just coming to the Hustleberg community, haven't heard or seen an episode before, um, I like to describe what other people call failures as lessons because it's something that we can learn from going forward. So what are some of those takeaways in these lessons that you've learned as you've been building your business? Yeah, um, definitely be consistent. Um, consistency, especially with social media and getting sure. um, and talking with people in the community um be adaptable um you have to adapt especially with covid you know that put a lot of wrench in people's plans so you really have to adapt how you communicate with people um and then delegate i had a problem because i thought i could do everything on my own you know i was like i just because i like to have my hands and everything i like to know how things are run and everything but I learned the hard way that you have got to delegate. And again, you have to surround yourself with people that will help you out in a good way. Now, what's something that sets you guys apart from the others in this field that's here in St. Pete? Why would someone want to choose you over someone else if all other things are equal? Um, so I would say because we do deal with more complex and treat with complex conditions. You know, that is our specialty. We don't okay. treat everything. So we are more specialized. Um, and then I feel like I do have a lot of great resources. I still have my foot in the door in the Western medicine field. I keep in contact with a lot of MDs and um, nurse practitioners and everything. So, um, and mainly the chronic, we do deal with more chronic and difficult to treat uh, conditions. Now, what are some of the most inspiring things that you've been able to work on within the community, both the healthcare services community that you operate in, as well as the St. Pete community at large? Right. right. Um, so, I don't know, this may be like a, a cheesy answer, but, you know, it, my, my patients inspire me every day. Um, okay. You know, they have had a hard road, a lot of them, but they're, they've been told no many times, and mm. they are living with things that you know, you and I may not want to get up every morning because of that. And so they get up every morning, they're still trying to get better, they're still trying to be you know, better mothers or better part of society. And it inspires me to be better practitioner and a better business woman so I can help more people in the community. Um, and then a the second thing, you know, I was, um, I was working in the hospitals up until May and okay at St. Anthony's. And during that time, I was just amazed. I mean, I know the St. Pete community is awesome already, but all of these restaurants and stores were donating all of this stuff and food to the healthcare workers. Now, they were shut down and they didn't know where their next paycheck were going to be, but they were still donating to the healthcare workers. And that like, that inspired me too. We had a fantastic response, I think, from the small business community, uh, regardless of what field that they're in, in any way that they could help. You know, you saw the breweries that started making hand sanitizer. You saw the restaurants providing the food. You saw free deliveries that were happening when that's not something that normally does. And then we also saw some amazing pivots uh, that happened in the community as well as people were trying to figure out how they were going to continue going forward for as long as we ended up in our current situation. Um, so 
changing gears a little bit from that, in your wildest dreams, where is it that you want to take achieve acupuncture and integrative medicine? And what is it that you're doing to get you to that dream business? Well, we did, um, I'm kind of right now, am living my, my wildest dream because um, just in the beginning of this year, I was in just, a, I was just treating out of one room. And so I knew last year that I wanted a clinic. I wanted to um, bring in more therapies to my clinic. I wanted to get bigger. I wanted to reach more people. So in February, I where it, I found our current location right here, which you know I went from one room to fifteen hundred square feet. And so and of course the build out was in February and March, and we were ahead of schedule and everything was great. And then COVID happened. But you know it became a blessing because we were able with a bigger space, we are able to keep um, patients socially distanced and all patients are safe. And um, because we, now we have six rooms and a lobby and a lounge area with recliners. So we have the space. So this is, kind, this is my dream to awesome. up that. <laughs> I would love, you know, just to be known as the go-to clinic for you know chronic conditions and, and infertility so that it's more like developing and growing into this space and um so we're constantly doing something you know every day you know trying to grow into the space and um yeah yeah so so right now i am kind of living in a dream sometimes it's still surreal and yeah so a lot of uh, professional services providers also find themselves working so much in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. How would you estimate, how much, I guess, would you estimate that you spend on the day-to-day -day versus how much you spend on developing things to get achieve where you want it to be? Um, so I probably am twice twice the time that I, on the outside, than I do here in the clinic. Um, yeah. And that's because we are in such a new location. And I feel like, you know, most of my time, I'm always thinking about the clinic. And I know that's not healthy, um, but I, I, by next year, I don't think it'll be like that. Um, and again, my assistant has helped me take a lot of that uh, burden off too. So I would say, I, I make myself take one complete day off, like, okay. but I'm still, it's hard to turn off the mind when you've got something new going. Absolutely. Well, you know, you take a look at uh, the way that people can operate in the entrepreneurial field. Um, you know, it feels like you're going, 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 and, and that can work for a season. And we actually talked about that a pretty significant bit in episode number 42, where we were focused on self-care, where we were talking about burnout and we were talking about some of the things that you can do to help make sure that you aren't another statistic where you just burn out on your passion because you spent and put everything into it and there's just nothing left in the tank and you aren't refilling it. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you are forcing yourself to physically be away a day, even if you can't turn that switch off in your head. Yeah, I um, listened to that uh, episode okay. just yesterday and I thought, okay, so I'm gonna give myself so much time, you know, to really like push for this and then yeah. we need to back off a little bit. But um, you know what, right now it's really something that I love doing so much. And so a lot of times it doesn't feel like work or anything like that. Right. But when it's transitions to the other side where it's starting to feel like work and I, I know that I need to like cut down. So we're going to switch to things, the more personal questions that I have for you. Are you a native of St. Pete, Pinellas County area? I am not. I've lived here for the last eight years, um, but I, I grew up in the Midwest. I moved to the Tampa Bay area, oh my gosh, about almost about 20 years ago. I lived over okay. in Tampa and then I worked over at Bayfront um, as a nurse for a while. And then I left the area um, for about two years because I did travel nursing. And then I okay. came back and I thought I would visit everyone. So I'm like, what is happening to St. Pete? Like it is just growing and thriving. So when I decided to move back, I moved back to St. Pete. 
Now, when you aren't working in Achieve and, you know, providing the services that you do, what are some of your favorite things to do in and around town? Um, so, especially with COVID, I uh, felt like I needed to get out more. And so safely, I've been able to, I get up early and I, I walk the beaches. Um, okay. The St. Pete Beach is just, you know, we really have such a beautiful area. And during the morning time, you know, you see the dolphins and the, and the manatees and everything. And then um, now with the pier open, like that, the way they've laid that out is just phenomenal. You know, you have restaurants, you have um, places that you can just chill out on the grass, listen to music, places, you know, to, to have the kids run around and everything. So I go out there and then also, you know, I just walk around downtown St. Pete because there's always a new restaurant. There's always a new boutique. There's always something new that pops up. Um, and of course, the breweries are great here, too. So, yeah, there's so much stuff to do. Well, now, as things are kind of opening back up a little bit more and we're starting to see some events that were maybe postponed or, um, you know, are, you know, kind of kicking off their 2021 season are there any activities or events that you have upcoming that you want to make sure that the hustleberg community puts on their calendar so that they can maybe meet or find out more about acupuncture and what achieved us right right yeah so we did actually do the women's expo um over in um, tampa they had to have it at the fairgrounds last month and then in a couple of weeks, we're doing, we're going to be a part of the holiday market. I think it's the 21st and the 23rd of, or 21st and 22nd of November. Um, and then we're hoping to be a part of the senior expo. I know they've postponed that. So hopefully it'll be in January. And then um, January, February, depending on how everything goes, we'd like to have a grand opening here. Okay. <laughs> you know, we always have to play everything by ear. So um those are those are some things that we have you know on our calendar so far and we'll make sure that we put that in the show notes for the things that you might want to be looking for if you're watching or listening and you need to find out more about achieve and and dr gibbons and in the event that i missed something let's make sure that we let people know where they can find out more about achieve acupuncture and integrative medicine so that they can connect with you we're talking website social media handles and the like Sure. Um, yeah, I, I have a list. <laughs> so, um, where our website is achieveacuim.com. And so uh, we have the our Facebook, which is at Achieve Acu. And we try and do a couple of Facebook lives a week just to keep people updated and get to know us. Um, our Instagram is Achieve Acu Clinic. And that is more towards um, like the women's. Uh, uh, health in that area. And we do um, live stuff with that. Um, we do do some print, some ads. And then of course, I think we do some Google AdWords and, and that kind of stuff. So we're, we're kind of in our hands are in a little bit of everything. <laughs> All right, Dr. Gibbons, it's been fantastic having you talk with me today. I look forward to sharing this with the Hustleberg community. Is there anything we didn't get to cover that you want to make sure that they hear and see from you about? Um, no, I think, you know, I, I thank you and then the St. Pete community, you know, for highlighting all the small businesses too. This is, it's such a great city. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks again, Dr. Gibbons. Hey, you did it. You've just listened to Hustleberg. If we provided you with something of value with this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast player especially you Apple Podcast listeners. This is something that only takes a few seconds, and it will help us shine the spotlight on all the great businesses that St. Pete has to offer and grow the Hustleberg community. Speaking of great businesses here in St. Pete, if you're a small business owner and you'd like to share the story of your business with the Hustleberg community, please let us know by visiting beyondyoursidehustle.com slash podcast guest. Did you know that at Beyond Your Side Hustle, we're helping small business owners reach ideal engagement on any social media platform with a free three-week training by email? It's available at beyondyoursidehustle.com slash three weeks. Start right now to learn how you can fix your feed to better serve you, start engaging on social the right way, and create a community around you and your business. 
The opening music in this episode is Defining Your Dreams by my friend Rhymer Educator. I encourage you to check him out on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to great music. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to continuing to share with you how we do business in the Berg.